Dave, let's go ahead and get one thing straight. Let's <laughs> settle this. The other day, Chris Russo and I were talking about the postseason picture in the AL, and I said that I would be more nervous to play the Cleveland Guardians instead of the Seattle Mariners just because of the grit of that team. And you quickly went to your keyboard and said, uh uh uh, Lana, not so fast, my friend. I think the Mariners have got everybody's number. Change my mind. Why? Well, we we have. Uh, well, first of all, Lana, great to see you. And thanks for the invite. Uh, grit wise, the Mariners are as gritty as anybody. And they pitch. They're one of the top pitching teams going, one of the best defensive teams playing. They've got the third best record in the American League. Uh, and that starting staff is on a roll right now Luis Castillo, Robbie Ray, George Kirby, Logan Gilbert, Marco Gonzalez. The bullpen has been lights out. Uh, and Eugenio Suarez is on a tear since uh, August 1 with 15 home runs. The Mariners have hit 61 home runs since August 1. And Julio's being Julio. He's going to be a 30. He's got a chance to be a 30-30 guy. Uh, I just think that right now this team, it has not peaked too early. It's peaking at the right time. And momentum is outstanding right now. And it's a, it's a really together group, too. And I think that also, as you know, plays a big part in, in the success of a baseball team or any sports team. I love the passion that you have for this club, and I so desperately want them to bring the announcer cam back so we can watch and listen to you call the games. Now, I want to ask you this. Right now, the Seattle Mariners have a percentage, uh, a little bit of a percentage lead over the Blue Jays. If the season ended today, they would play the Blue Jays in that first wild card spot. Does that make you nervous, even if they're playing in Seattle, because of the way that the Blue Jays fans travel? Um well aware of how Blue Jay fans travel, but I tell you what, when you've gone 21 years without a playoff, I really like the chances of Mariner fans filling that park and maybe uh, curtailing some of the enthusiasm uh, of the Toronto folks. We love having them, <coughs> excuse me, we love having them in a ballpark, but hey, 21 years is a long time, and they'll fill that place 46,000, and I'd like to think about 44,000 of them are going to be Mariner fans. You know what? The Rangers are coming into town as well, but the Mariners have the easiest uh, remaining schedule. But I don't know how much effort we should put into that, Dave. Just ask Buck Showalter of the Mets, who just got swept by the Cubs. How much value do you put in remaining schedule? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I get chastised by my wife. I said that about a week ago. Hey, you know, after this stretch of 500 te- plus 500 teams, we play 20 teams, you know, 20 games under. And boy, I got home and says, what are you talking about? You got to win the game. I went, you know what? They <laughs> help them. <laughs> You're right. I was wrong. You got to tee it up and you got to be ready to play everybody. I don't care what the records say. I mean, I was just looking at some numbers here, putting together for uh, for the Angel series. I mean, they're still dangerous. They're major leaguers. And and one thing these cats love, they love being, if you're in a down situation, you love being in a spoiler situation, an opportunity to deny somebody. So uh, I'm not counting anything till, uh, you know, that magic number gets down to one and that 27,000, and, and I get a chance to say, ladies and gentlemen, the wait is over, baby. They're going to the playoffs. <laughs> Your wife is a very smart woman, and I only bring up the Rangers because everybody the Mariners play are 20 games uh, under 500. The Rangers are 19 games under 500. So your wife is a very smart woman. Okay, let's talk about the positives, and there's so much, Dave, when you look at the Mariners. What excites We've talked about the grit, but what excites you the most about this club who you say is playing at the right time, the, the way they're supposed to be playing at the right time? The young one will lead. I'm telling you, Julio Rodriguez has been sensational. We knew he came in highly regarded, highly acclaimed. And look at these numbers. Look at the production. The other day, uh, it was Sunday against the Braves, a great ball club. And they had just, you know, just taken the heart out of the whole Pacific Northwest with a couple of home runs to take the lead. Mariners blow up five run lead. And we have a shot on TV. Our guys did a great job. And then Julio coming in, he had this confident look on his face. Boom, comes up, ties it, uh, and out later, uh, Gino wins it. It, it, The excitement that that he has helped generate, Gino being hot right now, the young pitchers, Cal Raleigh, you know, he had been sent down earlier in the season. He's got 23 home runs. He leads catchers, all catchers in home runs. So a lot of things are working. Uh, Sam Haggerty, a guy coming off the bench, has been outstanding. He's made defensive plays. He's come up with a couple of big knocks here and there, a home run here and there, steals a lot of bases, been caught once or twice. So uh, there's a lot of things to be uh, excited about with this ball club. 
I loved when Jerry DePoto brought Eugenio Suarez over to the Mariners, and he is hot right now. Dave, what are you noticing about his at-bats? You know, it's great. He, uh, he, he's, I think he's, last time I looked, he was leading the major leagues in strikeout. But he does, you know, he'll have a moment here and there. But who does it when you strike out that much? But he's hitting home runs, and he's on a streak right now. And he's also played a fab fabulous and a fantastic third base, very consistent. And that's a, he's one of the, you know, our infield has just been tremendous. I mean, Gino and J.P. Crawford, Adam Frazier, Dylan Moore, when he plays second, uh, we got Carlos Santana, Ty France at first. That defense has been great. The outfielder's been outstanding. So, you know, Gino's, and, and he's a guy, you know, good vibes only. That's the, that's the, that is the, uh, the catchphrase in Seattle, good vibes only. He's into it. Uh, and, and the enthusiasm just permeates the whole ball club in the city. My final two questions for you, Dave, surround your pitching. Let's talk about George Kirby first as he takes the hill tonight. And if you get on base against George Kirby, you're going to have to earn it. One or fewer walks in his last uh, 21 starts that he had, one, or one walk or less, I should say. What makes him so stingy? New York guy, ride New York, just north of New York City, fearless. Um, pounds the strike zone. Uh, works the edges. So I Ron Washington, my good friend, the Atlanta Braves third base coach, he said his his guys, they said they weren't impressed with his stuff. I mean, they were impressed. But what impressed them was his ability to control all four quadrants and paint an edge at any time that he wanted. And again, he doesn't walk anybody. And he works quickly. And again, I think that for me, uh, being an East Coast guy, I think the thing I, I take away just the fearlessness. Hey, I'm coming at you. This is what I have. Let's do this. I love that. <laughs> yes. Born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Dave Sims. All right. So Kirby has allowed one walker less in each of his first 21 starts. The significance of Luis Castillo coming to your club. Stud. Flat out stud. I've got my friends in New York. Yankee fans are still angry that uh, Jerry DePoto was able to... Uh, make a deal and beat the Yankees through Castillo. <clears throat> Another guy, <clears throat> excuse me, fearless, great stuff, will challenge you at any time. And I, I read something about him really that he will abuse that bottom part of the order. And then when he gets to the top of the order, he gets to those big boys, three, four, five, then, then it becomes a stuff thing, a stuff performance. And he comes from a very funky angle and has unbelievable ride and on his on his pitches. Uh, Adam Frazier told me uh, that he was telling Jerry DePoto early in the spring, say, hey, man, you got all these guys from Cincinnati, and you're talking about adding pitching. It could be Frankie Montas or uh, Luis Castillo. So I'm telling you right now, you got to get Castillo because, you know, he, Adam said he had nightmares trying to hit against Castillo, as, <laughs> as do a lot of guys. He is big time. Yeah, he is big time. So are you, three-time National Sportscaster of the Year for the state of Washington, longtime play-by-play -play voice on television for the Seattle Mariners. Dave Sims, we love you. We appreciate your enthusiasm, and uh, we'll see what happens in this uh, American <laughs> League uh, postseason push.